In my experience, this is probably going to be the biggest problem a do-it-yourselfer or someone who is just starting out learning about stair building is going to make when it comes to adding a nosing to the stair step. So let's go ahead and get started with a floor plan layout where we have eight 10 inch treads, 48 inches wide, and the stair stringer will look something like this and use the same measurements we have for the floor plan layout. 10 inches, eight 10 inch steps will provide us with a stairway that will fit within 80 inches. However, if you make this step one inches larger because you're planning on putting a one inch nosing on each one of the steps, when you're laying out your stair stringer, you're going to end up with a stair stringer that will not fit into the 80 inch measurement. You're going to have a stair stringer that will fit into an 88 inch measurement. Eight 11 inch steps that will have an 11 inch depth and with a nosing will have a 12 inch depth, but still have an 11 inch individual run for the stair tread. So we're not going to add the nosing measurement to the length of the individual stair tread. We're going to lay the stair stringer out in the same way we would if we had a stairway without a nosing. So again, we're going to have a 10 inch measurement here on the stair stringer, and we're going to have a 10 inch measurement for the finished step without a nosing. And if I want to add a one inch nosing and create an 11 inch long stair tread, a stair tread with an 11 inch depth and a one inch overhang, I'm just simply going to make the tread one inch wider. Instead of a 10 inch tread, I'm going to add an inch to it. The length of the nosing to the depth of the individual tread run, in this example, 10 inches. So again, I'm not going to modify the stair stringer for the nosing. And this is what a lot of do-it-yourselfers seem to do. I've seen it plenty of times and hope that you don't end up repeating the same mistake. And hopefully that makes sense. Now next up, I want to show you how you can take a piece of paper and simply grab some measurements, scale them down, and then draw them on your piece of paper and then measure the angle on that piece of paper and then measure the line on that piece of paper to calculate your stringer length. So another way to do it if this is going to be easier for you. So let's go ahead and start with a run of 5 foot 10 inches or the length of the stairway and the total rise or the height between the levels, upper level, lower level, where we're going to have four foot one inch. And for those of you who might do a little better understanding what the stair stringer is going to look like for these measurements, let's go ahead and fill that in along with the length of the board we're going to need to lay out our stair stringer. This will be the minimum length for these measurements. And let's go ahead and zoom out here. So we're starting with this right here to calculate the length of the stringer. And if you're starting with this right here and you're not working with a set of building plans, you actually have the measurements, you can lay it out on your project. You can simply measure from this point to this point. And if you end up with seven foot six inches, you can buy an eight foot piece of lumber for your stair stringers. However, if you have a set of building plans or you're designing a set of stairs, and the Pythagorean theorem might be a little too difficult for you, just simply break these measurements down. I'm going to use six foot and go a little longer with this measurement and then go four foot for this measurement here. And all I'm going to do is scale down the length of the stairway. Instead of six foot, I'm going to use six inches. And instead of four foot one inch, I'm going to use four foot and three sixteenths of an inch, or forget the three sixteenths of an inch and just use four foot. And when I draw that on my piece of paper, I'm just gonna come off of the corner of the sheet of paper. This is a 90 degree angle on the piece of paper. So if I come off six inches, and then go up four inches. I'm gonna get seven and three sixteenths of an inch. And then I'm simply going to change this back to feet. Remember this was six feet and four feet that I scaled down to four inches and six inches. So I'm just simply going to scale this up from seven and three sixteenths of an inch to just a little bit over seven feet. And I don't think you can get much simpler than that. 
without using the Pythagorean theorem or actually measuring the actual distance on the job site. And if that doesn't make sense, let's go ahead and take an example where we might have seven foot three inches and five foot six inches. I'm just simply going to break those measurements down to a fraction because there are four three inch increments in a foot. So if I had any measurement around three inches, I could use the quarter inch to scale down my feet to inches in the same way I could do it up here. Five foot six inches would break down to a ratio of five and a half inches. And if I measure the length on my piece of paper and it's around nine inches, I know I'm going to need a nine foot board. And I'm not about to suggest this is going to provide you with accurate measurements, but it's usually going to be close enough. Since I can't get a nine foot piece of lumber, I'm going to get a 10 foot piece of lumber, providing me with plenty of room to lay out my stair stringers. And next up, let's take a look at the 25 inch design rule. And this is simply taking two riser heights and one tread depth measurement and adding them together to see if you can be between 24 and 26 inches or one inch away from 25 inches. So don't bother asking me why they don't call it the between the 24 and 26 rule for designing a comfortable stairway for most people to walk up and down. And for those of you who have watched my channel for a long time, you might have seen the 17 and a half inch rule. And that would be when you add the depth of the tread to the height of the riser. And you can see here, if we do that, we have 17 and a half inches. This is a comfortable stair step for most people. Here's another comfortable stair step for most people. And if we add these numbers together, we're going to get 25 and a half inches. Here's another one that will add up to 24 and a half inches and another comfortable stair step for most people. And for those of you wondering who most people might be, that would be the average sized person. And even though I don't have those exact heights, I would be guessing those measurements would be somewhere between five and six feet. Because this stairway is not going to be comfortable for someone who is three foot tall or someone who might be over seven foot tall. And now to provide you with a few reasons why this formula isn't always going to work. And that would be if we had a situation like this. Because even though this provides us with a fairly comfortable stairway to use, it might not be as comfortable as the ones I just showed you. And definitely not as comfortable as this one here where we have a small step and a tall riser height. So what should you do with the 25 inch rule for designing stairways? I would simply suggest using it if you have a riser height between six and eight inches, or if you have a tread depth between 10 and 12 inches. And it works within the maximum and minimum building code measurements in your area, which would also fall into the category of most of the stair step measurements you're going to find on a stairway anyway. However, I wouldn't use it for a situation like this or a situation like this. A situation like this, you're going to be taking two steps most of the time. And even though that might be comfortable for someone who has a difficult time raising their legs up this tall, maybe an older person, and let's not forget that you can design your stairway for the people who are going to be occupying the property. Just keep in mind that if that property is ever sold, it might not work for the next owner. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.